Hello Much Mom and welcome to my questions and answers video. I put a video up about a week ago and invited everyone, like I have done before, just to comment, ask stuff and I will be more than happy to answer it. So here we are. I um, hope you are enjoying your long weekend if Easter is celebrated where you are. Um, yeah, day three of a four day weekend and it's so nice. I wish every weekend was like this. So come in, pull up a chair, go and get a cup of tea or a glass of wine, whatever your preference is. Wine for me, thanks, always. Um, in a champagne flute today because I'm feeling a bit fancy. And um, yeah, let's do this. Thanks to everyone that um, posted a question. And with no further ado, let's do it. Oh, before I start, I'm going to put this into two parts, I think, just so it doesn't become too much at once. Um, so here we go. The first question. Rebel One, aka Neil Atkinson, aka King Marty, I recently discovered. You little rot, are you? Um, you asked me, what do I think James Bond would smell like? In all honesty, I've, I know who James Bond is, obviously, but I have never seen a James Bond film in my life. It's not my thing, I'm not really into spy things, but I know he's very suave anyway and a bit of a ladies' man. So, I'm guessing something like cigar smoke. Gin? No, it's not even gin, is it? It's martini. Is it martini? I don't know. I told you I've never seen a film. It's martini shaken, not stirred, isn't it? Something alcoholic, um, something smoky. I think he smells quite clean as well. He always looks very crisp, doesn't he? And but I wouldn't know the difference between Daniel Craig and whoever Chambers that it is, because I don't really know the differences between them. So, I couldn't say. James Bond would smell very classy, wouldn't he? And I'm guessing very sexy. Okay, this one comes from The Perfume Nerd. I recently just discovered you. Congrats on your channel and everything. As I said to you before, I really like your style. Um, and I'll post a link to The Perfume Nerd's channel underneath here. Go and check her out. She's from New Zealand, which I love people from New Zealand. I'm actually going to come over to that country in February next year with my best friend. I'm really excited. Um, you asked me... Montel. Uh, I've reviewed two of their fragrances already. They're quite hard to find over here as far as I know and but um, I recently got all of these let me just show you like a whole bunch of Montau samples I think I got about 14 of them there's more in there um, so I'm kind of still discovering them I'm a bit wary of them because of the fact that so many of their fragrances contain oud and I don't really like it that much I've decided that I'm just I was on the fence for a while, not too fond of it. Uh, the most recent one I tried was Luban. I wore that for a couple of days and <clears throat> someone told me I smelled like disinfectant when I wore it, so it was just another swipe really against to the towards the negative of not really knowing about that company. But I bought this set that's called um Flowers. I also bought the Musks and Woods, so I tried to veer away from the Oud ones. So at the moment I don't really have a favourite. Watch this space, because I will be reviewing them soon anyway. Thanks for your question. Yeah. Next question is from Thrifty Chica. I also watch your channel. It's really good. I love that you try and find all these bargains and stuff for everyone, just to, you know, keep, keep the uh, purse strings tight and not lavish too much. So you asked me... Okay, three questions. Um, what fragrance do you love on others, but not on yourself? Um... That's a tough one, actually. I don't really know. You know, there isn't really one. There isn't really a, a fragrance that I don't like on myself. The reason I wouldn't wear a fragrance on myself is because I just didn't like it overall. I've never got to the point where it's where I think, oh, it's nice on you, but I couldn't. If I don't want to wear something, it's literally because I don't like it. And it's as simple as that, really. So that's the answer to that one. Um, if I had an unlimited budget, what would be your first fragrance purchase? Ooh, this. I've got a sample of it. It's Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mao. I've got two samples of it, actually. I just... This is the next one I've got in my sights. I have to get this one, but it's really, really expensive. The big bottle is £215, so... Yeah, quite a lot of money, but it's a gorgeous, incense -y rose. It's really dry. Um, 
it's quite dark smelling and it's really strong as well. Gosh, you're going to need a couple of spritzes of it and so it'd be worth the money when I actually do eventually get it, but for now it's just a distant dream, I'm afraid. And finally, which fragrance are you usually a bit embarrassed to tell people you're wearing? It's usually, and I know this is going to sound bad, but it's usually some of the celebrity ones, only because the celebrity ones have their faces splashed all over it and you run the risk of someone turning their nose up. Not that I should care, but unfortunately people are shit sometimes. So um, I would say the Britney ones, although I really like them, I rarely find myself wearing them outside. I just really, they're, just, they're very pleasant to smell. So they're really kind of sweet and bearish as everyone really knows, uh, already knows. So I don't really wear them ones out because, yeah, for that reason. It's kind of bad, isn't it? But it's true. Next question. This question comes from uh, C. Miller, Cara. You asked me a lot of questions, lady. It's good, though. I like that you've got a lot of things to ask. I usually run out of questions really quickly. So in interviews, when people say, have you got any questions? I normally just say, no, not really. So you said, um, if you could create a perfume that tops a well-known masterpiece, which masterpiece do you think you'd want to top? I wouldn't. <laughs> I know you probably, I know I'm supposed to be thinking outside the box here, but I think if it's a masterpiece, it shouldn't be touched, ever, and especially not by me. Um, I don't know if you mean if I, wanted, if I was going to recreate one, or try and enhance one, or just completely make something that blows everything up of the water. If it was, you know, the latter, then... I'd love to have something as successful as Shalimar or, you know, Chanel Number no. 5, but I know I've got big dreams, but I don't think that's ever going to happen. I know you shouldn't limit yourself, but um, unfortunately, no. But yeah, masterpieces shouldn't be touched. They're masterpieces for a reason. Next question. This is from Vampire Freaks 1992. I think that's you, George, because you asked me this separately as well. Hey, Thomas, if you could choose between only two perfumes from your collection to wear on a daily basis and nothing else, what perfumes would you choose? Well, I already told you this. It was a hard choice, and it's a cruel question as well, but it would be Samsara, of course, and my signature, Stella, both because I never, ever get bored of smelling them. I go off fragrances quite quickly, as I'm, I presume a lot of you guys that collect them do. But those two, I just never get bored of them, ever, so I could wear those solely. But don't ever make me do that, because I'll be upset. <laughs> okay. This is another one from C. Miller. Another question. If you were dating someone who wore a perfume you hated, would that be a deal breaker? Hmm. Would you politely tell them, would you try to endure it? It wouldn't be a deal breaker, no because I'm sure that I wear loads of fragrances that people hate. Um, would I politely tell them? No, I wouldn't. But what I would do is, I would give them a gift of something even better. Use my knowledge to buy them something really cool and just can hopefully turn them right off of that one and make them see that there are much better things out there. Sneaky, but, you know, it's better than saying to someone, oh, I don't like that. Uh, don't come near me, ever. Sleep over there. Okay, next question. Okay, I know you love India. Is it your favourite place you've travelled? If not, what is? What's the place you haven't visited that you'd most like to travel to? Um, India isn't my favourite place that I've travelled to, no, but it's definitely up there. It has stolen a piece of my heart. I love everything about the culture, the smells, the way it seems like it's stuck in a, a time zone far away. It's just... It feels like you go back in time when you go there a bit. Um, my favourite place I've travelled to, I would probably say is either Vietnam or Thailand. Thailand is the one I've been to the most. I've been three times and yeah, I love it. Unfortunately, it's changed quite a lot now from what I see and hear and read about. I went the first time about 14 years ago and although it had changed quite a bit, it's still, it's still not as much as it is now. It seems to have turned to a very 1830s place now, where there's lots of groups of young lads that go over and just like, drink, 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 and 
Yeah, there's still beautiful parts, but then some bits have been ruined. Um, and the place I haven't visited yet, I most want to go to is the Philippines. That is on the top of my bucket list, and hopefully I'll go really soon. I just can't wait. It looks stunning, it looks beautiful, it's just made up of thousands and thousands of islands, and it looks really culturally rich as well. So I, love to, I just love Southeast Asia in general. I just really love the whole vibe of the whole place. So um, yeah, that's that one. What are some of your other interests and hobbies? Um, little bits and pieces. I love the usual. I love to read novels, usually. Um, I also, well, from when I was a young young lad, I used to collect lip balms. So I still kind of collect lip balms now. It all links back to the sense of smell. I've got loads. Um, but with those, they don't really last very long. I keep having to throw loads away because they don't, they're just sitting there and I just smell them sometimes and mess around but yeah I, I have a slight obsession with lip balms I've got tons of them um, travel is my other biggest passion uh, biggest if not other biggest it is my biggest passion if you told me I had to choose between perfume or travel I would choose travel any day and that's really hard to say but I just think what else is there in the world to do but see it there's so much adventure out there and things to be discovered and while perfume's amazing, immersing yourself in a completely different place so you don't feel at home anymore and just feel like you're in another world is the best thing to me ever. Um, when I was younger I used to do trampolining a lot, I still wish I could do it now but I'm getting a bit too old. Um, I've got a gold medal in trampolining, it was just my favourite sport at school, I just fell in love with it straight away and um, it's my favourite thing to watch on the Olympics as well. I just like the whole somersaulting gracefulness of it and yeah, I love trampolining as well but I don't really do that one so much now as, I'm, as I said, I'm getting on a bit. Next question. This one comes from Mark Anderson. Um, hi, I love your videos. Well, thanks. Uh, do you ever layer fragrances? If so, which ones work, work well together? Thanks, Mark. Um, again, I don't. <laughs> I don't layer fragrances. It kind of links back to the other question. I, I truly believe that if something's been created already, I'm a little bit OCD with my perfume obsession, and I like to really appreciate something for what it is and don't feel like you should try and change that. That's just my view. I have done it before, though. Um, not with anything commercial or eau de toilette. I've mixed two of my Black Phoenix perfumes together. I mixed snake oil, which is a Indonesian spiced vanilla, and then Scheherazade, which is a very smoky incense, and it was really good actually, I'm not gonna lie. It came out very rich and opulent and exotic smelling, um, but I really, really don't layer my fragrances. I won't even put one on top of the other if it's day to night. I'll have to shower in between, so yeah, OCD weirdness all the way. <laughs> Eric Myers. Hi. Um, if you could have only one Black Phoenix bee power, what would it be? Um, that would be Pink Phoenix. That's the, my favourite one I've ever smelled. I reviewed it recently as well. Um, that's a really hard question though because I really do like loads of their fragrances, but it would be Pink Phoenix. It's got sugared pear in it, honeycomb, um, strawberry, vanilla. It really is like a, a sweet, sugary, honey kind of smell. Um, but I really do like their incensey things. That's really tough, but I'm gonna say that because I've always said that's my favorite. Um, all time favorite skincare. Well, I can show you actually, just wait right there. It's this. It's a product by Lush called Angels on Bare Skin. I used to work for Lush, I worked for them for two years. Uh, best job I've ever had in terms of fun and being around so many beautiful smelling things all day and getting to try everything out. Um, this is a cleanser. It's based on a medieval recipe. Um, it's, I think it's the best product they sell ever and probably always will be. It's a very gentle exfoliator. It's made out of crushed almonds and lavender seeds, rose oil um, and kaolin. So it kind of lifts all the oil off your face. You can use it 
every day because it's that gentle and they call it angels on bare skin because they say that after you've used it it's like angels have come down and kissed you on the face and believe me it seriously makes your skin so soft I never, my skin's never felt softer when I use this it's like baby skin so I use that that's my favorite skincare product ever and it's nearly running out as well I need to get more I can show you the inside actually it's kind of like a weird paste I've nearly finished it damn I need to get more um, my favourite home fragrance, I don't have a favourite one, but I really do like Yankee Candles, which is, I think that's a lot of people's choice. Um, I really like the Cinnamon Stick Candle and uh, the Baby Powder one, but I've had all different ones. I had one that changed colour once as well, it's not like pine and trees, and that one was really cool. But yeah, Yankee Candles really get the job done, I think, so that's why I like them the most. See Miller again. What's something that's high on your bucket list? Um, I mentioned it a minute ago, going to the Philippines, that is something that I really, really want to do um, and do while I'm young enough that I can still party there and climb up things if I need to, climb up mountains and hang off of trees or do whatever it is that I do when I'm on holiday. That's really high on my list. I really would like to do something voluntary in Thailand, I know you can do, um, where you can go over and volunteer and help build huts and things like that. I know quite a few people that have done that and they said it's just been a really fulfilling experience. I'd like to do that. I'd like to learn Spanish somehow. I think I'm going to get Rosetta Stone. I'd like to do that. And a big, it's not a bucket list thing, but it's a big goal and it's to pass my perfumery course. So I'm going to put that on my bucket list so it forces me to keep up with it and do it. So I'm near the end of it. So I've still got a long way to go though. That's a good question, thanks. Anima Mundi. Have I said that right? I know it's you Priscilla anyway. How are you my darling? You said, um, tell us about your passion for vanilla. When did you realise you liked it? Is there any special reason? Which feeling this note evokes on you? Um, I'm starting to appreciate vanilla more deeply because of you. You my vanilla guy. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's very sweet. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's a passion for vanilla. Obviously, I just really like it. When did I realise I like it? It comes from a very early age, doesn't it? Ice cream, when things get baked, icing, anything that's got it in, it just reminds you of me of... It's nostalgic. It reminds me of being young, being a kid, um, sweet, yummy things that you just want to eat, and it's just one of those smells that you feel like you can eat. It makes you hungry when you smell it, so... That's kind of why I like it. It's probably the same for most people, I would say, with vanilla. It's just a very familiar smell. It's easy to come by, and it never gets boring. It's just comforting and cosy and nice. So, yeah, it just feels, it just evokes feelings of when I was little, I guess, and that's that. I'll speak to you soon, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so my mind went off on a tangent then. So, let's have a look. Oh, fragrance of the day, by the way, is my most recent purchase. I got this recently. It is Doosan or Doosan by Diptyque. Oh my gosh, I got this recently and I, I'm in love with it. It's a real gorgeous tuberose fragrance. It's really crisp and airy and light. Um, well, slightly heavy because it's tuberose, but it's a lot lighter than a lot of ones that I smell. Yeah, keep spritzing that one on today. Really nice bottle, it's got a picture in the back then. Just out of interest. Anyway, next question is... This is a really good question. Um, what's the best way for someone to figure out a commonality in fragrances they like? For example, I know I like very strong, dark, mysterious, complex scents, but that's a style. I like to be able to zone in on some notes or note combinations. So. That's basically, the way to figure out a commonality is, it literally comes from practice and experience. You just have to smell as many perfumes as you can. There's always Fragrantica, of course, which if you don't know already, I'm a member of, and quite a lot of you guys are, I think. That's a really good way uh, to be able to look at the breakdown of notes and fragrances to find similarities. There's even a function on there where if there's a fragrance you like, underneath people can vote 
and what is similar. Although some of them are off sometimes, but you can get a general idea. Um, yeah, it really does just take a lot of sniffing and smelling and that helps you be able to pick out notes. You can, if you looked at Fragrantica on two fragrances that had a very predominant note in each, smuggle side by side and it helps you pick things out really, really quickly. But yeah, you just have to smell a lot of stuff, so um, yeah, hopefully that helps. Madison Cross, what is your favourite perfume note ingredient? That's a really tough question because so many combinations of so many things make up other things that smell wonderful even though they're just, say for instance something like oak moss which I don't like. Um, there are fragrances that contain oak moss that I do like because of the way it's blended in and stuff. But my favourite perfume note um, oh, I've got a few. I'll, I'll say tuberose, actually. Um, it's my favourite flower, most certainly. It's. I just think it smells kind of. I don't know. It's got its kind of its own incensey vibe to it, anyway. Tuberose. I like it. It's very rich and flowery, and doesn't smell like any other flower. I, I don't think. I just. I don't know. It strikes a chord with me. I'm going to say tuberose, although my taste is very, very wide. I've got. Gourmands, I've got Orientals, I've got things, the green fragrances. I really like um, fig leaf. I've really discovered that recently and just fallen in love with it. Also, tomato leaf, which smells very stemmy and green and nice. But if you have to pin it down on one, tuberose. I hold that up because this has got tuberose in it. <laughs> Thanks for your question. Okay, this question comes from Nay G. says, all right, I need help with this. I like all of the different concentrations of Shalimar, but I'm having trouble picking out one to buy between the EDT, the EDP, and the Parfum. Which do you think is the most unique or the most worth it? Well, I wish I could answer that, but do you know what? I've never smelled Shalimar EDT. I'm a little bit of an eau de Parfum whore. I just tend to go for them all the time because when I see EDP, quite wrongly, I just immediately think it's gonna be better. I don't know, it's just something in my brain. Um, the Parfum I would love to smell, I can imagine that it's absolutely beautiful. Um, I personally own the EDP one, but um, unfortunately I can't really help you with that one. I don't know. The EDP to me is lovely and rich, it's really long lasting, but I've heard that the Eau de Toilette has um, different properties, still just as beautiful, but you might be better off looking online for that one. I'm really sorry that I can't help you there. Sorry Neji. Okay, Kerry Phillips. Hi, how are you? Hope your channel is still going really strong. I will link your channel underneath as well. You have to share the YouTube fragrance of you love, don't you? And um, what was it that got you first interested, or first got you interested in fragrance and perfumery? It was really just a natural progression from being obsessed with my sense of smell. I've always been obsessed with my sense of smell. I'm that person that just smells everything. My uncle is the same. That's why I collected lip balms when I was younger. I am the person that you see in the laundry detergent aisle just opening all the bottles and smelling them. I just, it was just a natural progression for loving things that smell nice to being interested in how they make them and getting my own hands into it and seeing what I can make and just the endless possibility of it and seeing how things can change and what you can blend things into. It's just that really, it was a natural progression. It just seemed like it was the right way to go. I do feel like I found it a bit too late in life. I, you know, I've discovered it being in my 30s, but still, it's still amazing. Cara, another question. Have you read Luca Turin's book, Charm the Birds? What do you think about them? Do you find it helpful and are enjoyable to read perfume books such as these? If so, are there any you recommend? The short answer to that question is no, I haven't read either of them. I have heard mixed reviews about Luca Turin and his views. I haven't read them because, from what I understand, Luca Turin does a top 50 or a top 10 perfumes of all time kind of thing and because of the amount of perfumes that get released all the time there's always new things coming out so 
reading the top 10 of a professional's view would probably only be good for five months. I mean, I don't know, I just don't, I haven't read them. The kind of perfume books that I would read would be more about the creation and um, sourcing natural ingredients and kind of more on the academic side of it. Um, I probably would like to read them, but I just haven't ever, it's never really sparked my interest. Trying to burn, what do you think? Mm, I don't know. I haven't got any to recommend because I haven't read them. Sorry, boring answer, I know, but it's true. My tutor actually recommended me for anyone that's making um, fragrances or getting into the industry. She recommended me one called Perfume Flavorist Sourcing Natural Ingredients, like I just said. But it's £300, so I haven't got that one yet. Maybe in the future, after I buy a portrait of a lady. <laughs> so, that's actually the last question of this part. Um, part two is coming up, I don't know if it will be today. If it isn't, it will be next Saturday anyway. So, thank you all of you for sending in your questions. I hope I didn't bore you too much. Sending in, what do I think, I'm on some sort of television channel. Thank you for posting your uh, questions. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Cheers!